So I've always had an interest in multitasking programming. And back in the days when I was at university, I wrote this thesis uh, called another real-time multi-process operating system where I work on a on a preemptive real-time program to uh, prioritize the tasks and have some sort of prioritizing scheduling going on. And I'm uh, pretty happy with uh, the results. I did quite well with this thesis, first class honors, and uh, it was a fun little project to do. But I've always wondered, can the Z80 CPU actually multitask itself? And uh, so I've always been fascinated to see if I can get this running. And, and in this video, I'll be getting the Z80 CPU to multitask. What I'm going to design here is called a preemptive multitasking system. Preemptive means that the operating system controls uh, when tasks are scheduled in and out of the CPU. So in order to figure out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to start this project, I need to have a look at some of the higher level concepts. And this is kind of the general idea of what I want to achieve in this project. I have a Z80 CPU running a task. Currently it's sitting in task one. It's got a, some registers going on in the CPU and a stack pointer, program counter, etc. I'm going to be using interrupt mode one. Now how that works is that when an interrupt does get triggered on the Z80 CPU. I'm going to put it pushes the current program counter onto the stack. It sets up the current program counter to be 0038 and then disables interrupts. And so this task swapping routine will be at 0038 to handle the task swapping. And as you can see here, I've got a clock uh, oscillator here, or a square wave that on every low on the, the interrupt line does get triggered. And the plan is to set that at about 50 hertz and I'll explain why uh, later. So how do I get these registers in and out of that CPU? Um, well, one way to do it is to, obviously I've got a store into RAM, so I can use uh, this load HL to put into the HL. I can get the value from memory into HL, or the other way around is to store the value of HL into somewhere in memory. Now that takes uh, 16 uh, clock cycles and three bytes, but there are there is a better way to do that and that is by using the stack pointer as a sort of a, a, a way to quickly interact with RAM and uh, the CPU registers. So load stack pointer to a particular uh, stack pointer address and then using pop and push. So it's a bit quicker in terms of clock cycles and it's only one byte. And to get the shadow registers, uh, you can use uh, exchange uh, AF and EXX to do that as well. And uh, when I'm popping all of them on and off, it's much quicker to do it this way by doing push and pop rather than the direct memory access here. So the interrupt goes low. The plan is to take uh, task one out of the CPU and uh, swap it in with task two by doing these push and pop routines. And then uh, at the next interrupt cycle, when the interrupt line goes low again, uh, I pop the task 2 out and put task 3 in by using these push and pop commands. So there needs to be some kind of information about uh, where the tasks are in terms of you know where their current program counters are and where their stacks are, their individual stacks. Now overall this looks quite good and easy to do but there is some challenges. Firstly they can't use the same memory locations because um, you know, if they're using the same RAM location, they need they could over overwrite each other's code. So they need individual unique RAM locations. They also need their own stack area as well. So each task also needs their stack area. So every task will come with a particular stack area and then also their own RAM area as well. And uh, each of these tasks will then flow in and out. They'll have their own stack and RAM area in and out of the CPU. So why did I choose 50 hertz? Because you need enough time for each task to run to do its stuff. Otherwise, it will look too uh, blocky and too, too slow. And an ideal way is having 0.5% of the CPU being used just for the interrupt service routine. So the ideal overhead will be about 0.5 CPU time. The clock I'm running, or the CPU is running at 4 megahertz, and an interrupt service routine, I uh, estimate it will be about 400 clock cycles to do the pushing and popping and the management of the, the stacks. So that gives a 0.1 millisecond 
it will take just to do the t task swapping and if that is at 0.5% then at 100% it is 20 milliseconds per task so I need to interrupt the CPU at every 20 milliseconds which is exactly 50 Hertz have you been dreaming of that electronic project and want to make it a reality just like my ultimate expansion board for the Tech 1F well head over to PCB way to make your dreams come true PCB way are the leading printed circuit board manufacturer they make high quality multi-layer boards with the 24-hour production time just enter the board dimensions and upload your Gerber file and that's it once posted a neat box will arrive with your well-packed goodies. Just look at the quality of this board. They also do PC board assembly, CNC machining and 3D printing. You can even order user project boards directly from their website. For $5 off your first order, click on the link below. PCB way, prototype the easy way. The most important routine in this program is when the interrupt occurs to swap the tasks. And this is kind of the overview of what I plan to do. I'm going to have a pointer that points to a list of stacks. Now these addresses here are the, the stack address for each task. The CPU over here has got task 1 currently executing. It's got various registers going, stack pointer, and the program counter. Then when an interrupt occurs, the program counter will be pushed onto the stack of the current stack. And immediately I'm going to push all the CPU values onto the task one stack. That obviously updates the current stack pointer. That stack pointer, I'm gonna save back into the stack list where the current task pointer is pointing to, then get the next stack address for the next task. So I move the pointer down by one. That will then be put into the CPU as the current stack pointer. And to restore the next task, I'm gonna pop all the registers off the stack into the CPU registers. That will obviously update the stack pointer. And then I'm just going to enable interrupts and do a return. And a return will just pop the next value off the stack and put it into the program counter, which happens to be the, the address of the task. And so task 2 now gets executed. That goes along up to maybe about, let's assume, 8 bytes, and then it gets interrupted again. And the same process follows. So the interrupt will be called and the program counter will be pushed onto the stack. Then all the current state of the CPU registers are going to be pushed onto the, the task stack. Stack pointer will be updated. It will be saved back into the stack pointer list. And then I'll get the next stack address for the next task. Pop that back into the stack pointer of the CPU. Pop off all the registers on the stack. Put them into the CPU. Update the stack pointer. And then return back to the calling routine, which is now task three, and that will get executed and continue running along. And this process gets repeated. Well, once I get to the end of the stack list and I reach an FF byte in the stack, I just loop around again to the first task and repeat the process. So now let's look at the code and see how this is all done. Now let's have a look at the code which does the multitasking. It's called the preemptive multitasking simulator. Now this is just a proof of concept, so there are some limitations with this design uh, in terms of the number of tasks that can be run together and also the stack size. So when an interrupt occurs, the task swapper routine will be executed. The current task address will be pushed onto the stack. Then I push all the registers of the CPU onto the stack itself. Now the stack pointer is at a new value, so I save that onto the stack pointer list at the current task location. Then I get the next task stack. All I do is increment the stack pointer by doing an increment HL. I get the value of that stack pointer and I do this increment A. If it is FF, increment A will set A to zero, which will set the zero flag. And if it is zero, I just set it to the start of the stack. Otherwise I use the next stack address. Once I've got the next stack address, I need to, to load the contents of HL to the stack pointer, and there is no instruction to do this. So I do this clever routine where I load the stack pointer to HL, pop HL, which gets the contents of HL, which is what I want here, and that's the new stack pointer, so I just load it to the stack pointer again. Now I've got the new task in the stack pointer, so I just pop all the 
saved elements off that stack, put them into the CPU, and interrupts are currently disabled because on every interrupt call they automatically get disabled so I need to manually enable interrupts again and then I do a return because the new task return address is currently onto the stack it'll jump to the new task. Now this routine here has to be extremely quick I've got it down to 400 clock cycles which suits well with the 50 Hertz timing. To generate a square wave that will interrupt the CPU, I'm going to use this circuit. This is a 555 timer chip. It's set up so that it has a 50% duty cycle and uses this particular formula to calculate the frequency. So now I have this formula, I need to work out the resistor and capacitor so I can generate a 50 Hertz clock cycle. And I'm going to use this uh, Hewitt Packard calculator, a bit of a vintage calculator. It has a solver in there. I've keyed in the formula, 0.72 divided by the resistance and the capacitance. So I do a calculator. So I need a, a hertz of 50 hertz. So if I do 50 and put that in as the frequency variable. Now the capacitor, um, just to make it easy, I'm going to use a 10 microfarad. So that's 0.0001. Put that as the capacitor. And then if I press uh, resistor, it will work out the resistor value which is exactly 1.44 kilo ohms. So it's hard to find resistors that are 1.44 kilo ohms, so I'm just going to use a 1.5k resistor. And here is the clock circuit simulation, it uses a 1.5k resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor on the 555 chip and you can see here the duty cycle is 50% and approximately 50 hertz. Okay, so here is the square wave generator using the 555 timer chip. I've just got a, an on off switch here. I only need three pins, which is the uh, interrupt line and ground and five volts. But uh, to make it more stable, I've got this six pin here and just uh, a little one on top for the ground. So I just plug that into the 40 pin socket because I don't need all 40 pins. So I've made it this small. Just got to make sure you put it, I'll put it in the right spot. There it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is just demonstrate the four programs that I'm going to multitask at the same time, just run them individually. The first one is at address 5000. It's just a seven segment LED kind of rotator. Goes pretty fast running by itself. The next one is this uh, 8x8 eight eight matrix, kind of a square zoomy thing going on here. Alright, the next task is 53DD. Run that. This is uh, using the graphic LCD screen. It's just uh, a little test. You can press any button and it will actually rotate through all the advanced character sets that the, comes with the GLC screen. A lot of uh, Chinese characters, numbers, letters. So this will uh, this will be good to uh, see if uh, keyboard input also works while multitasking. And the last task. So this is a program I created a while ago. It's uh, kind of like a physics engine where characters on the LCD screen are flying around at random velocities and bouncing off each other. And uh, yeah, I've just got eight different characters going on here. And you can kind of see them. They're, uh, if you look closely, they do hit each other and then they bounce off at different angles. And sometimes they do overlap each other. But um, it's a nice little program. I haven't seen, actually uh, used this for a while. So this is the fourth program. So putting it all together, um, I run my multitasking program. I've got the menu here and the four programs I can select individually. So if I run the seven segment demo, and if I just run load one program and then hit multitasking, you can see it's running here. It is actually a bit slower because it is task swapping, you know, back to the same task. And you can see there's a bit of a small delay there, but it is working. If I exit that. All right, so let's uh, run the program again and load all of the four tasks up. All right, now I've got all four tasks running at the same time. You can see the seven segments, the LCD, the GLCD, and the 8x8 matrix. If I press the key, you can see it's also interacting with the GLCD screen. 
and it is going a bit slower than they usually go by themselves, but that's obvious because you've got to, you know, give each task a go onto the CPU. But pretty happy with that with that result here. Um, you know, for the prototype and just getting to work, um, you know, it can we can make it go a bit more efficient. But happy how it's going at the moment. And uh, just a little example of it: you can actually multitask the Z80 CPU just with a bit of clever code and here it is. So thanks for watching this video. The code is available on the GitHub address. Please like and subscribe and um, we'll see you next time.